Thursday algebra. So this is fun, right? Like I'm here, but I'm not really here. It's kind of almost spooky that like I can teach to a classroom full of nobody, but you guys are sitting and listening to this now, which is weird because it's really in the past I did it the night before. It's very, very confusing. It's kind of crazy to think about, but let's just get out with the notes, right? Sometimes I just like to talk. But um, here we go. 7-7, seven, seven, last section of our chapter, exponential growth and decay. So uh, all I want you to think about in this lesson is, you know, exponents, and we did some graphing the last two days. Exponential growth and decay is just kind of like application. Um, tomorrow we'll do more like word problem things together so you guys see it more real life, but just know that today is more just like, what is this used for in real life? Like, why do I care? Okay. Um, here we go. Let's answer these few questions on the front. Tell whether each graph is exponential growth, exponential decay, or neither. So maybe let's review. Exponent, oops, didn't want to do that. Exponential growth, da, 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 da. let's put that over here. So grow, I hope you guys think it means like to go up, right? When you grow, when a plant grows, it gets taller, right? So exponential growth, well, I hope we've learned now that an exponential graph kind of swoops up like that. So it means it's going up, 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 and away. Now decay, decay kind of means like to decline or, you know, like your body decays when you die. I don't know. It goes down, though, I hope is what I want you to think. Well, you read a graph left to right. So you start from the left and go to the right. So a, um, exponential decay goes like this. Starts up, and then I go down, 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 down. Okay? So we have exponential growth and decay, or neither are our options. So number 17. Oh, it's real quick disclaimer before we start. Um, the subs are going to ask to see your notes what, um, to get your homework. So just make sure you write down everything I put on the screen so you can get your homework. Otherwise, she's going to make re remake you watch this video, and that would be just terrible. Okay. Back to notes. So 17, we have what is called a parabola, and it is U-shaped, right? It's U-shaped. So I hope we all know by this point that that is not exponential at all. So this would be a big old neither. Neither. It's not either. 18. Well, this graph kind of has a swooshing effect. So I think we can decide that yes, we know it's exponential, but is it growth or decay? Well, remember guys, you start on the left. Here's your left. Start here and I go, 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 go. Now I'm going up, 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 which means it's growing growth. We probably knew the word exponential before it. Exponential. Running out of room. Exponential growth. Did you guys get that? Good job if you did. Scrolling, scrolling. Here we go. Let's check out this one. 19 has a swooshing effect, kind of what we'd like to see. So I think it's safe to say it's exponential. But am I growing or am I decaying? Remember, start on the left, go to the right. I'm starting up and I'm going down, 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 like that. So it's DK. Exponential decay. And our last graph here, kind of fun. It's like a fun little curvy thing. But I sure hope you're thinking I've never seen that before. I don't know what she's talking about. Well, you're right, because it's nothing we've ever talked about. So it's neither. Um, fun fact, just so maybe you know in the future, this would be a cubic function. So like x to the power of 3, some number to the power of 3. We'll give you a graph that looks like that. Okay. Um, this next part's going to be kind of hard because I know the answer. So maybe you want to take a second real quick and see what you think before I spoil it for you. Um, it says state whether each equation is an exponential function. If yes, do you think it's growth or decay? Um, maybe pause the video for three seconds and put yes, no, see what you think. 
If not, I'm going to spoil everything right now. Okay. Remember, exponential functions have the uh, variable in the exponent. So really, we just need to figure out where is our x? Is it in the exponent? If it's not, then it's not exponential. So if I look at number 11 here, I have y equals 8.2 times 3 to the x. Our variable's in the exponent. So yes, this is an exponential equation. And we think it's growth or decay. I'll let you just leave that blank. You decide. Is it growth or is it decay? I don't know. Maybe it's neither. Who knows? Okay, number 12. Here we go. f of x equals 5 times 0.3 to the power of x. So again, our variable is in the exponent. So yes, exponential function. You decide if it's growth or decay. Would your line swoosh up or would it swoosh down? 13, f of x equals 18 times x to the power of 2. Uh, is this tricky? It's kind of tricky. But think, is my variable in the exponent? No, a 2 is there. So this would be no. Um, this would actually be quadratic if you want to label it. It's a quadratic. It would actually be a U-shaped graph. And lastly here, we have y equals 0.9 to the power of x. Again, variable is in the exponent, so we get a yes. And you decide, is it growing? Is it decaying? How will we ever know? Well, we'll find out once you flip the page. Flip the page, please. Oh boy, a lot of words. But we're just gonna underline some things so we can kind of pick apart what's important, okay? So, exponential growth. Bubble it, circle it, so we know, oops, 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 oops. So we know that it's the growth, okay? So again, this is when a graph kind of swooshes in the upward direction. So what's the distinct key factor here? Well, remember from yesterday when I said to circle our generic exponential equation. So y equals 8 times b to the power of x. So here we go. Let's break this down. Your initial amount is a, so that's where you start from, okay? That's great and all, but really, we don't care about that right now. Right now, what we care about is this B value, the base. If the base, so if this B value is greater than 1, if it's bigger than 1, then we have an exponential growth. Growth. So if your B value is bigger than 1, we are growing, it is swooshing up. So if this B value is any number bigger than one, it is exponential growth. Perfect. Okay, on the contrary, exponential decay. Again, we're swooshing in the downward slope. We're coming on the downside of the hill. Exponential decay. Big thing you wanna take away here, folks, is your B value needs to be less, less than one. Less than one. Then it is exponential decay. So really today, the thing I want you to hit home and just get a hold of till I see you tomorrow is if your B value is bigger than one, it is growing. You're getting bigger. And if it's less than one, it's decay. So let's try identify some of this information in an example. It says, tell whether each exponential function is growth or decay. So first we gotta decide, are we growing or is it decaying? That's step one. Then identify the initial amount, A, so our A value is two, and then our growth or decay factor, 
B. That's our third thing. So each one of these problems is going to have three little answers. So step number one on problem one. We need to decide, is it growth or decay? So remember, you need to look at your B value. Here's our generic formula. Y equals A times B to the X. So here's my B. Here's my B in our example. Is B bigger than 1? Yes, 5 is bigger than 1. So we are growing growth. And then it says identify the initial amount. So what am I starting with? That's your A value. Here's our A value here. So our A value is simply 3. And what's our B value? Well, it's 5. All we did was identify. We did nothing else. Okay, I wish I could see your face to see if we get that or not. Let's try another one. So again, first decide if it's growth or decay. So we are looking at our B value. Is 1.065 bigger than one? Sure is. We are growing, it's a growth. What are we starting with? What's our A value? 250. And our B value, what is our growth factor, is 1.065. Good work, folks. You're doing great. Doing great. Let's try another. Again, growth or decay. Here's my B value, 0.8, less than 1. Good job. So it is decay. Our A value, what are we starting with? 8. And our B value, 0.8. Number four. This is a great question. So are we growing or decaying? So what's our number with the variable? 3.5. Is 3.5 bigger? Is it bigger than 1? Sure is. Growth. But here's a tricky part. So look. These two functions look different, and they're different because number four is missing the A value. So if there's no A value, guys, it's simply just zero. It's not present. It's gone. But our B value, we can find it. It's 3.5. 3.5. Okay, I would like you to take a moment, try these last two on your own. Oops. And I will give you the answer shortly. So really, don't sit there. Try them. See what you get on your own. And I will put up the answers. Are you doing it? Right? You're not waiting for me just to put it on the screen? Try it. Pause the video. Because I'm going to put the answers up right now. B value is bigger than 1. So it's growth. Our A value, 5. Our growth factor, 1.02. And our last one on this slide, we have f of x equals 12 times 0.1 to the power of x. It's 0.1 bigger than 1. False. It's decay. What's our a value? Well, that's 12. And our decay factor is 0.1. If you got those, I'm so proud of you. Good job. And then we have just a few more examples on the next page. And I know the next page looks like it's a lot of words, but it's just because they break down the problem for us. Do not get so concerned about all of these words. Because this is the fun part. This is where we can see why is this important. So we're just going to put it into a word problem and see what happens. So problem number one says, suppose the population of a town was 25,000 people in 2000. If the population grows about 1.5% each year, what will the approximate population be in 2025? Use the words exponent, growth factor, and initial amount to complete the diagram. Then find the value of the expression. Okay, so I'm just going to drop down our generic formula here for exponential function. So y equals a times b to the x. So remember, A, that's our initial amount. That's what we're starting with. So in this problem here, our initial amount is 25,000 people. That's what our town was, that's how we went, that's how many people we found to be living in our town. So here is our, not an O, 
our initial amount. That is what our town is starting with. Okay, so we got this one out of the way. Now our growth factor, remember guys, that's just your B. Your B is your growth factor. So here's our B. There's our growth factor. This looks a little different. Growth factor. And don't break my heart because I all, I know that all of you know what an exponent is. Our exponent is the little number up top in the corner. So here is our exponent. Value of the expression. Now that's what we need to do. Um, if you don't have a calculator, go get one because now it's just crunching numbers. So you can plot or crunch this whole entire thing into your calculator if you want. I'm kind of weird. I always do things in parts. I don't know why. I have no idea why you do it. But I would first type in 0 .1 to the power of 25. Then I would hit enter. And then I would take it times 25,000. And then we'd find that the population is now 36,273.6. Well, you can't have 0.6 of a person, so I'd write 36,274. Always round up, right? Positives. So that's our new population. So in 25 years, we really didn't grow that much. Only like 11,000 people. Okay. Um, let's try another one here. If you didn't get that or if you're totally confused, work with me. We're not done yet. We'll still keep practicing. We'll keep practicing. Okay, now let's try an exponential decay problem. So it says the kilopascal is a unit of measure for atmospheric pressure. The atmospheric pressure at sea level is about 101 kilo kilopascals. For every 100 meter increase in altitude, the pressure decreases about 11.5%. What is the pressure at an altitude of 5,000 meters? So I know it's a word problem, it's kind of hard to understand, but we're just filling in right now, so it's kind of breaking it down for us. So look, they already gave us our initial amount, our 101, when we are at sea level. Now for every thousand meters I go, because here's the sea level, so every thousand meters I go up above sea level, my pressure decreases. Okay, well how much you might ask? Well, we need to take, we always have a one here, okay, so one, and we subtract if it's decay, and we add if it's um, growth, but in this case we know we're decreasing, so that's why there's a minus there. Well, how much, oops, sorry guys, am I subtracting? Well, I'm subtracting 11.5%. Okay, I know a lot of you are going to put 1 minus 11.5. That's a big old wrong. That's not right. Because think, it's 11.5%. So if you don't know how to get a number into a percent, all you have to do is type it in your calculator, 11.5% divided by 100. So if you took 11.5 divided by 100, it would crunch out 0, wrong decimal spot, 0 0.115. And that's the number you want to put in this yellow box here, 0 0.115. Or if you don't want to divide out, all you have to do is move your decimal place two times, one, two, and then that's the number ah, you would put there. Perfect. And then another box we need to fill in, the X one, the number of times the pressure decreases. So again, we have to think, every 1,000 meters it decreases this amount. What is it at an altitude of 5,000 meters? So how many thousand meters fit into 5,000? Crosses out, crosses out, crosses out. Oh, five divided by one is five. So five times. So again, now you guys, it's just calculator work. Just punch this into your calculator. 
101 times parentheses 1 minus 0 0.0115 to the power of 5. Take a moment to practice that, see what you get. You should get 54.8. Okay, two left just so we can practice how to do these all on our own. Okay, two left, you can do it. It says determine whether each, um, determine whether each situation is exponential growth or decay, then set up an equation and solve. Okay, so this time we're just doing the whole all of it on our own, but we can handle it. All right, here we go. The town manager reports that the revenue for a given year is $2.5 million. The budget director predicts that the revenue will increase by 4% each year. If the director director's prediction is right, how much revenue will the town have available 10 years from the date of her report? Okay, so Thing. I'm increasing, so this is a growth. So we first got that squared away, so I know it's a growth. Okay, here is our generic formula for this. Y equals A times parentheses 1 plus or minus what we're going up by or down by to the power of some variable X. Now let's fill in the blanks here, guys. Not so bad, I promise. What is her prediction starting at? What are we starting at? $2.5 million. Could you imagine when I said B? There's our A value times the one stays. That's always there. Okay. And then we said it's increasing, which is growing, which means we are adding. So now I know that I'm adding instead of subtracting. So I'm adding what? 4%. But don't put 4 here. It's not 4. I'm not adding 4. I'm adding 4%. So here's 4% over 100. So 4 divided by 100, guys, is 0 0.04. Again, if you had 4, move your decimal places two spots. 1, 2, put it here. That's how I got that. So that's what's going right here. 0 0.04. After how long? That's our exponent. Well, here, 10 years. 10 years. Now, again, this is just calculator work now, folks. I'm going to simplify before I punch into my calculator. Let's simplify what this parentheses would be. So 2.5 times 1 plus 0 0.04. Just 1.04 to the power of 10. And now I would type in your calculator. 2.5 times 1.04 to the power of 10. Take a moment, practice it, because if you don't know how to do it in your calculator, you'll, you won't be able to do it on your homework. But you should get a total of 3.7 million, so that's what we're working in, dollars. Wow, that is a lot of money for a city to bring in, just in revenue. There's the million. Yep. Good job. And our last problem for the day. Here we go. The population of New Haven was 148,220 in 2005. Since then, the population has been decreasing at an annual rate of 2.9%. If this rate of decline continues, what will the population be in the year 2015? Well, let's see if we can predict what it was. So that's already in the past, which is crazy. So first we got to decide, growing, decaying. How will we know? The big key word in this whole little sentence is decreasing. If I'm decreasing, then it's decay. So again, let's start with our generic formula. Y equals A times parentheses 1 plus or minus, we don't know yet. Leave it blank to our exponent. All right, what is our population starting at? Well, it's simply starting at 148,000. 
220. Now we're just copying our formula times parentheses 1. How will we know if it's plus or minus? Well, remember it's decreasing, so that means it's minus. Minus what percent? 2.9%. So again, you can take 2.9 divided by 100, and it will give you 0 0.02. Nine. Or if you don't like doing it that way, remember you can just take your decimal over two spots. One, two. Got the same answer. So one minus point zero two nine. And then after how many years? How many years is it from 2005 to 2015? Ten. Ten years. So again, let's simplify what's in our parentheses before we type it into our calculator. So y equals 148,200 times, what did you get? Well, I hope you got 0. Point, oops, not 0. 0. 0.971 to the power of 10. Typing that into our calculator, what do we get? One hundred ten thousand four hundred thirty-three people. That makes sense. I mean, it's not decreasing at a very large rate. So over 10 years, to lose about 38,000 people. That sounds pretty good to me. Um, thank you. I know this movie probably got kind of long, and I apologize. I'm sad I couldn't be with you guys today. Um, please help each other. Be good for the sub. Please don't cause any issues. Um, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a very wonderful, great rest of your day.